Next we're going to look at independent events. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one has no effect on the probability of the other. Here's some examples of independent events. If you flip a coin, the outcomes of successive flips of a coin would be independent. Okay, if you flip a coin, it might come up heads one time, tails the next. Whatever happened in the past has no effect on what's going to come up on the next flip. The probability of getting heads is always 0.5. The probability of getting tails is always 0.5, regardless of what's happened with that coin in the past. If you look at successive rolls of a die, those outcomes would also be independent. Dice have no memory. You roll a die. However many times you've got sixes or ones or whatever, the probability of getting a six is uh, always one-sixth, regardless of what's happened in the past. So the successive rolls of a die are independent. If you draw cards from a deck, draw two cards from a deck and then put the first card back before you draw the second, assuming that, of course, you put the first card back and then you shuffle the deck again so that it's really randomized, you draw the second card. What happens with the second card? is independent of what happened with the first card. Okay, This is what we call sampling with replacement. You're pulling one object out of a set and uh, then you're putting it back before you draw another one. Okay, sampling with replacement. It's a very common terminology that we use in statistics. If you don't put the first card back into the deck before the second card is drawn, then the outcomes are not independent. And that's important to keep in mind. This is what we call sampling without replacement. You're not putting the first card back before you draw the second card. And because of that, outcomes on the two cards are, on the two draws rather, are not independent. And uh, that's important. We'll have to keep that in mind for later on. If you have independent events, there's a rule called the multiplication rule for independent events that uh, relates the probability of A and B to the probability of A and the probability of B. And it's called the multiplication rule because basically you just have to multiply the probability of A times the probability of B to get the probability of A and B. It's a very simple rule. If you know that A and B are independent, you can use it. This is true if and only if A and B are independent. Okay. Now that works both ways. If A and B are independent, then this equation is true. And if this equation is true, then you can conclude that A and B are independent. So it works both ways. It's if and only if. Okay? Here's some examples. We're going to find the missing probability assuming that A and B are independent. So we've got the probability of A is 0.8, the probability of B is 0 0.6, probability of A and B is unknown. To find that, we're just going to have to multiply these two probabilities together. And that's all we have to do. Probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. It's 0.8 times 0.6 or 0.48. Suppose you're given the probability of A and the probability of A and B, and you want to find the probability of B. Well, you can just solve for that without too much trouble. The probability of B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. And that's 0.12 divided by 0.3, which is 0.4 in this case. Okay. If you want to find the probability of A, given the probability of B and the probability of A and B, just divide. Divide this by that. 0.42 over 0.56 is 0.75. So it's an easy rule to use if you know your two events are independent. You can also use this rule to go the other way. If you want to determine if two events are independent, you can do that by seeing if the rule works for the probabilities that you're given. So if we got the probability of A is 0.4 and the probability of B is 0.6 and the probability of A and B is 0.3, all we have to do is multiply these two numbers together and see if the product is equal to that number. And if it is, the events are independent. And if it isn't, then they're not. And in this case, probability of A and B is 0.3. Probability of A times the probability of B is 0.24. It's not equal to 0.3. So those are not independent events. Here's another one. Probability of A is 0.36, probability of B is 
probability of A and B is point not point zero 0.09. Well, we'll multiply those two together. If we get point zero 0.09, we're in business and A and B are independent. And in this case, that's the way it works out. 0.36 times 0.25 is 0 0.09, and 0 0.09 is equal to 0 0.09, so this equation works for these values up here, and so the events A and B are independent. Okay, now here is a little bit of a more complicated situation. A and B are disjoint and non-empty events. That They're disjoint, that means they have no outcomes in common. Their intersection is empty and that the probability of their intersection is going to be zero. But if A and B are also non-empty, they both have positive probabilities. So we can put those two things together and come up with something interesting. A and B are non-empty, so the probability of A is positive, and the probability of B is positive. And if you multiply positive times positive, you get positive. But A and B are also disjoint. So A and B, that event, the intersection, is empty, and the probability of that event, A and B, is equal to zero. Now, if you plug these things into your multiplication rule, we have positive times positive is positive. This over here, probability of A and B is zero, and zero is not equal to something that's positive. And since these are not equal, events A and B are not independent. Now all we had to assume here to begin with was that A and B are disjoint and non-empty. And that was enough to show that A and B are not independent. So here's a general rule. Disjoint and non-empty events are never independent. This is one of the things that probably causes more problems with probability for people than just about anything else. People get confused about independence and disjoint. Okay? Independent means that the probability of one is not affected by the occurrence of the other. Disjoint means the two events have no outcomes in common. Now think about this. Disjoint. What this means is that if one of the events happens, the other one can't happen. So if you start out where they both have a positive probability, and then one of them happens, the probability of the other drops to zero because it can't happen anymore. And by definition, those events are not independent because the occurrence of the one changed the probability of the other. So always remember this. Disjoint non-empty events are never independent. And if you can keep that in mind and think about it for a while, it can help you out a lot as you go through your studies of probability.